Hey you guys, how you doing? Is number five on? Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Calvary Chapel La Mesa. Saturday night service. Amen. Amen. Yes. Are you ready to praise and worship the God of heaven and earth, the King of glory? Is he worthy of our sacrifice of praise? Amen. Is he worthy of obedience to the word of God? Hallelujah. Is he worthy of the sacri or the crucifying of the flesh so that we can enter into his presence? Amen. But he said the kingdom of God is now. Amen. And it, what was the rest of that scripture? He said uh, it suffers violence and the violent take it by force. If we want the kingdom of heaven, there's a violent shaking. There's only one thing in the way of the violent shaking. Our flesh. Amen. We got to push into the kingdom. Amen. Let's stand and worship the Lord. We're going to pray and I invite his presence. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you are the God of heaven and earth. That you are, are worthy of every sacrifice, every praise, Lord God. Every adoration, Lord God. We shout glory to your holy name, Lord. The, all of the heavens, 24-7, worship you. That is how holy you are. Lord, let us, the body of Christ, even now in this house, Lord, let us honor you with our lips, the fruit of our lips, with the clapping of our hands, with the raising of our hands, with the shouts of glory to your name, Lord God, because you are worthy, Lord. And Lord, as we worship you in faith and obedience, not out of religious duty, but out of faith, Lord God, we invite you to come on down. We invite you, Father, to put vision in our hearts to how to serve you in spirit and in truth. We invite you to speak life and direction and purpose in our lives, Lord God. You didn't call us to a life of apathy. You didn't call us to a life of wandering in the wilderness. You called us to a life of service, to service to the mighty king of heaven and earth. So even now, by faith, we invite your presence. We give you this service. This whole service is you, Lord God. If it's not about you, it's about nothing, Lord God. It's about us if it's about not about you. And it's not about us. It's about you, Father. So I ask you, Lord God, that you would move and you would remove the spirit of religion out of our hearts, out of this nation, the, the power of man out of our ways, and we would succumb and surrender to the authority of the Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. How many times... If I turned away, the number's the same as the sands on the shore. But every time you've taken me back, and now I pray you do it once more. Let's sing that verse one again. How many times have I turned away? The number's the same as the sands on the shore. But every time you've taken me back, and now I pray you do it once more. Please take from me my life. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Jesus, to give it away to you, Jesus. How many times have I turned away? How many times have I turned away? The number's the same as the stars in the sky, but every time you've taken me back, and now I pray you do it tonight. Please take from me my life, please take from me my life, when I don't have the strength to give it away to you. 
please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Jesus. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Lord. Oh, please take from me my life when I don't have the strength You know, if God told Peter to forgive 77 times, then he's forgiven us a lot more. So we can come to him and just keep repenting because we're a mess. <laughs> but ask for obedience, too, because that's what he wants. <laughs> it's not a license to sin.
Jesus. turned into wine you open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness oh into the darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you jesus there's none like you our god is greater because our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer power our God our God into the darkness you shine into the darkness you shine oh out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater sing it Woo. Cause our God is greater, our God is stronger, oh God you are higher than any other, oh, our God is healer, you're awesome in power, our God, our God, oh, oh our God is greater, our God is stronger, oh God you are higher than God is for us. Who can be against us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, you're awesome in power. Our God, our God. wants more of him.
Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. So take my heart. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. We all need that. Woo. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. So take my heart. Hallelujah. So take my heart. Thank you, Lord God. And for me. In the name of Jesus. Take my mind. Transform.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray that for us, even now in this body, that you would help us with those things, Lord God. Holiness and faithfulness, Lord God, and con conforming to your will, Father God. So even now, Lord, again, we pray that you would have your way in us, your vessels, that you would have your way in our hearts, that you would have your way in this service, Lord God, and that every moment of the service would bring glory to your name. And our ears would be open to hear what you have to say, not Pastor Dave, but what you have to say through your scriptures as you use him as the man of God to declare the word of God to your people. We ask you, Lord, to speak, and I ask you to give us ears to hear your voice, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, here's a novel Amen. thought, and that song was something else. That was a rocking song. Oh, hey, God. if we didn't come to this church for that reason, we came for the wrong reasons. Amen. If we didn't come to the church to have our flesh chastised, our flesh called out, our flesh exposed, and holiness to be our vision and righteousness to be our purpose, if we didn't come for that, if we didn't come to be transformed and renewed in him, then we're here for the wrong reason. Because if we just came to hear another message and go back home, turn the TV on and do our thing, then we're, we're wasting our time. You can't. See, we got it. We that's the song right there. There's nothing else. That's the whole purpose of coming to church week in and week out, is to hear God, not Pastor Dave, though he uses Pastor Dave or whoever's preaching. That's the design plan of God all the way back. He uses a person to declare His will, His vision, His truth to His body, His people. And if we didn't come with that expectation to hear from God and allow the word of God to come and prick our heart and charge us and challenge us and shape us and form us and conform us to his will, then we're wasting our time. We need to be, when we're here, this word right now, it should be speaking to our heart and everyone is different. But it's got to declare vision in purpose and if we're not as individuals letting that happen then we need to go from here and go man what am i doing wrong what has happened to me if you can't get vision from the pulpit and the word of god you, you then you're getting it from the word the world and if you're getting it from the world you're dying you're going to hell because the world's vision is anti-christ the world's vision is anti-god and it's death and it's about the flesh and that's the whole purpose of the word of God. That's the gospel. The gospel isn't go to church five days a week, once a day, one day a week. That's not the church. That's not the gospel. The gospel is to be sanctified, set apart, washed by the blood of the lamb, by the word of God, to be pulled out of the world, to be used by the master. And if we're not doing that, then you know what? We're dying inside. Nobody's perfect in that. And our flesh fights that all the time. But we have to remind ourselves, hold on, man. I'm a son of the Most High God. And that's my whole purpose of here, amen? And also, I would encourage you on that note to be praying for Pastor Dave. That he not be distracted. That he can hear from heaven. That he can hear from God. Because if you look at the world, we need, we need direction. The body of Christ. So even now, Lord... We're going to take the tithes and offering. You know, that's another thing you could be doing in your life. If you're not paying tithes and offering, the Bible says you're robbing God. We can sugarcoat it any way you want it, but the Bible specifically says you're robbing God. If you don't believe me, read it in the book of Malachi, chapter 3. And in the same scripture, it talks about Jesus uh, coming, the Messiah. So we can't say, well, it's not about Jesus or the New Testament because it's Jesus in that scriptures. And it says, will a man rob God? And he says, how am I robbing you? And God said, in your tithes and your offerings. That's a way to serve God. God, I don't have much, but 10% I do have. And God, when I bring it to the body of Christ, I want to give it to the church because I want to use it to witness to a lost and dying world. That's the least I can do. But, Lord, I don't want to just end there. Lord, I want to come to the body of Christ, and I want to be used of you in my gift and my calling. I want to serve 
you at Calvary Chapel, La Mesa, or wherever else you would send me. Oh, but Lord, I want to be used by you. Change my heart, Lord God. So as we collect these tithes and offering, no condemnation, just the word of God. The word of God is not condemnation, it's life. I pray for every heart here, Lord, that you would help us evaluate ourselves according to your love and your word. And Lord, if we're out of pocket, I pray you would show us and you would help us. Because Lord, you want to use us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. As the ushers come, amen. Let's worship the Lamb of Glory. We will worship the Lamb of Glory. We will worship the King of Kings. We will worship the Lamb of Glory. We will worship the King. Let's worship the Lamb of Glory. <laughs> We will worship the Lamb of Glory. We will worship the King of Kings. We will worship the Lamb of Glory. We will worship the King. And with our hands lifted high, we come before you and sing. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, and the world wonders why. We'll just tell them we're loving our King. Oh, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. We will worship the glory let us worship the king of kings we will worship the lamb of glory we will worship the king and with our hands lifted high we come before you and sing with our hands lifted high we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted high to the sky and the world wonders why we'll just tell them we're loving our king oh we'll just tell them we're loving our king and with our hands lifted high we come before you and sing with our hands lifted high we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted high to the sky and the world wonders why we'll just tell them we're loving our king oh we'll just tell them we're loving our king oh we'll just tell them we're loving our king we're loving you jesus Amen. Tell the person next to you, around you, good evening tonight. Glad good you're evening here. Tonight. Good evening tonight. Rain-soaked night. You guys showed up. That's good. Turn to the book of Acts. And a couple things to remind you about all the guys uh, that want to go Saturday uh, to the men's conference. It's this Saturday. And uh, what did Tony say? Leave at 5 o'clock? Is that right? 5 a.m. means you got to get up early on uh, Saturday morning, and it'll be a great conference up at the Anaheim Convention Center. So there's flyers about that. Meet here at 5. Yeah. And uh, it actually starts at 8 a.m., and so they figured get plenty of time, and he said he's going to bring some breakfast. So that's good news. And then also, uh, what's the movie Friday night? Where'd he go? What is it? God's not dead. He is not dead. It's a good evangelistic apologetics movie. So that's on Friday night at 6.30. Thursday night this week is Women's Bible Study, I believe. So uh, for all the ladies, Thursday night at 6.30. And then uh, Wednesday night, Dan's doing a great job through the Book of Chronicles. Tuesday night through the book of Matthew. And uh, so come and join us. Um, 
also you have two things right here. There should be two of them. If you didn't get the second one, make sure you get the second one as well. As well. This is the most liberal, far left, uh, absolutely hor horrible uh, proposition that's going to be passed in the most liberal state in, in the United States, California. And so you have an opportunity to vote no, and uh, it, hopefully enough people will vote no. But it talks about how we all should be voting in uh, this section right here. We have a responsibility to bring in righteousness. And so this tells a little bit about voting. And the other thing tells a little bit about the proposition, how um, we're the only state right now. Proposition 1 goes far beyond Roe versus Wade. And so here's some facts for you. And uh, you can pass these around to other people. And uh, get out and vote. Vote with your arms and your legs and your hands and according to the will of God, right? Just don't let it go by. Your vote counts. Every vote counts. Keep voting. Keep voting. <laughs> you only vote once, but keep voting. Acts chapter 1. We are talking tonight. We've come to Acts chapter 12. And uh, you can see the title there, God's Miraculous Rescue. And does anyone here need some kind of miracle from God in your life? Raise your hand. You need some, something's going on in your life. You need a miracle in your life. Well, this is a great chapter to encourage us because, you know, God is working behind the scenes. And you've come to the right place at the right time as we look at, you know, what God is doing in our lives. I mean, you look through the Old Testament and the New Testament, there's miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle, you know, and God is still doing miracles today. And uh, so many people need a miracle from God. And, uh, you know, as I was coming here tonight, there was an accident. Uh, Highway 94 was completely closed down. It's closed down. And as far as we could tell, there was a, there was, car on top of or out on the freeway and we don't know exactly what happened but they stopped the whole freeway and uh then there was a lot of other accidents people don't know how to drive in the rain and they don't know how to come to church in the rain either so <laughs> you guys are here and those of you watching online get your bibles out and open them up to acts chapter one and we're going to take a look at 15 verses in Acts 12, and we'll take a look at more as we go along here next week. But the summary of the book of Acts is provided in Jesus' words in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Here's the summary. Everybody have it? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. By now you should have memorized this verse, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He tells the disciples... You shall receive what? Power. Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be what? My witnesses. Ask the person next to you, are you a witness for Jesus today? All of us here can do that. You've been commissioned to do that. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. So God wants us to be his witnesses, to declare his glory, his wonders, his miracles. And we're told to be his witnesses. In, in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 18, he says, You are my witnesses. And then in Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, he says, Go out and preach the gospel to all creation. We can all preach the gospel, right? As, with whatever knowledge you have right now, you have wisdom from God. If you lack wisdom from God, he says, ask. If you lack wisdom, ask of me. So God wants us to ask, and he says that we will have wisdom. And he says, go and tell the world. You're witnesses. You're to preach the good news. And then in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20, go and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to obey Jesus. The word disciples, an interesting word in the, in the Greek, 
It, it talks about students. We should all be students of God's word. He wants us to go and make other students of his word. So you preach, you're a witness, you're a light. Go and make disciples, go and make students. And then he says in verse, uh, John chapter 21. So every book of the, of the Gospels, he tells us something. He was talking to Peter, but I think he's also talking to us when he says, tend my lambs, shepherd my sheep, feed my sheep. You know, we all could be doing that. You know, if you have a grandchild, if you have, you know, a, a friend, a cousin, an aunt, you know, a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, you know, feed them God's word. That's the most important thing you can do. Feed them God's word. And so now when you get to the book of Acts, <clears throat> he says in chapters 2, verses 1 to 13, that we have received his Holy Spirit and his power. Okay, you've received his Holy Spirit. You've also received his power. And so in Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to chapter 7, we see the rapid growth of the church <clears throat> starting in Jerusalem. Isn't that what Acts 1.8 say? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. So starting in Jerusalem, and we see the outpouring of God's Spirit in those chapters. And then when you get to chapter 8, <clears throat> to chapter 12, we see what happens. Persecution. We talked about that last week. If you're standing up for God's word and righteousness, it says you will be persecuted for my sake, for righteousness sake, persecution. And we see the persecution in the early church. But what did it do? <clears throat> did it cause the disciples just to say, I'm done, I'm finished, I quit? It caused them to dig in. It caused them to grow. And it also caused the spread of the gospel. It wasn't just to be a Jewish gospel. You know, there's a word in the Greek, ethios, which talks about a culture. It wasn't just to be a Jewish culture. It was to spread out in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. So in Acts, uh, Acts chapters 8 to 12, we find the spreading of the gospel throughout Judea and Samaria. And then it says the uttermost, uttermost parts of the earth. In Acts chapter 13 to Acts chapter 28, Paul and his companions spread the good news even in the Roman Empire, <clears throat> even in Caesar's own household, the gospel was going forth. And so go back to Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, we find Peter... He's the center of the narrative here in Acts chapter 12. And the church is well established now in Jerusalem. And Gentiles are coming to Christ in a city named Caesarea and Antioch. You know, Gentiles are accepting the Lord. And the church is starting to grow. And so remember, they called for Barnabas and Paul <clears throat> to go to the city of Antioch, if you read chapter 11. And they were teaching the people about Jesus. Now remember, Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He kept the law. And this is radical now that his life is changed, just like all of our lives are changed. He started teaching about Jesus. And there was a great revival, a, a movement of God that was taking place. And remember, he was also collecting support for the church in Jerusalem that they were going to take back to the church because there was a gigantic famine coming. And uh, so the chapter begins with the first death of an apostle. Who was the first death of the apostles? James. At the hand, Stephen was also killed, but he wasn't considered to be an apostle. But at the hands of King Herod Agrippa. Remember that name, King Herod Agrippa. He was the Roman, he was very evil, an evil Roman territorial king that was set up, King Agrippa. And we also see here the miraculous 
miracle, the miraculous rescue of Peter, the Apostle Peter. So we, you know, tonight you might have a need of some sort of miracle in our life, in your life. With men, it is impossible, but with God, what? All things. How many things? All things. All things. So the question is, do we really believe that? Do we really have that type of faith? And so, you know, we're going to talk about James and his death. He was, he was, de he was, they took a sword and they cut off his head. He was beheaded. For what reason? His faith in Jesus. His faith in Jesus. Just like there were many people, where was it that uh, they cut off the heads of believers and it was on TV, it was recorded? Where was it? ISIS. Where was it, though? Was it Iran and Syria? where they just went down the line and all they had to do was deny Jesus Christ as Lord and they would not deny him, so they cut off their heads. They martyred him, just like millions of martyrs down through time. And it was reported, we don't know this, really the only death of the apostle that we really have recorded in Scripture is the death that we're going to talk about today of James. But church tradition says all of the apostles died a martyr's death, except for who? Except for John. Now, it wasn't time yet for Peter to die. When it's our time, can we say, oh, God, nope, I, I got it. I, can you just wait? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't have time yet to die, God. I mean, the, the Padres want to make the World Series. Can you wait until after that? <laughs> no. When it's our time, it's our time, right? And so Peter, it wasn't his time to die in Acts chapter 12. But years later, it was reported according to history that he died a martyr's death. And he says, I'm not worthy to die like my Savior. And they crucified him on a cross upside down. Remember that? And so what about John? What did they try to do to John? burn him in a boiling vat of oil and uh, that didn't work and so they exiled him to the island of Patmos and uh, God gave him a major vision there of what was going to happen in the future the book of Revelation and then it says that he died spreading the gospel of natural causes years down the road but let's look at John ch uh, Acts chapter 12 verse 1 now about that time Herod the king laid hands on some who belonged to the church. And what was he going to do with them? In order to persecute them. In order to mistreat them. Remember it says there? <clears throat> and he had James, the brother of John, what? Put to death, executed with a sword, head cut off. And then when he saw that it pleased the Jews... He proceeded to do what? Arrest Peter also. Now it was during the days of the feast of unleavened bread. So what was James, what was his crime? Preaching about Jesus. Preaching the word of God, living for Jesus. That was his crime. You know, it's kind of sad that, you know, there's such a a uh, movement taking place today to put conservatives in jail or, you know, to people that believe in the Bible to persecute them in some way or another. And, you know, this was happening back in the book of Acts. And But God had other plans for Peter, and we're going to take a look at that. But Romans 8.31, I think Bill just, uh, part of the song was about this. It says, if God be for us, what? Who can be against us? Is God more powerful than any of the, you know, the, the governments around the world today? Yes, he is. Who can be against us if God is for us? If we're living for righteousness, if we're living for Jesus, if we're witnesses for him, if we're lights for him. You know, we're going to take a look at a verse later. It says, hey, they might kill the body, but they can't kill the soul. 
you know, that we, sh he says, don't fear man, but we should have an awesome respect of God who can cast the body and the soul where? Into hell. Eternal torment forever and ever. That's far worse, right? And so it pleased the Jews, verse 3. It, it pleased the Jews, so he proceeded to arrest Peter also. Now, he was in cahoots with the Jewish leaders, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, when he saw that they rejoiced over a Christian named James being put to death, you know, he goes, oh, man, I, I'm kind of, be, uh, what's the word? Um, be, not beholden. I'm encouraged that I'll just get one of these other Christian leaders. What's the word for not beholden? Encouraged. What's another word there? What's that? Embolden. Embolden. <laughs> I was almost right. Embolden to go and arrest others, right? And so he had Peter arrested. And he his next move was, okay, he was going to wait until the Jewish feast was over, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and then he was going to kill Peter after the feast. Probably going to behead him too. And so he might have had his plans but God had other plans. You know, even you being here today is just really a miracle, you know, and God wants to use every person here, every person watching online. Verse 4 says, And when he had seized him, he put him where? In the Hilton? I don't think so. In prison. And as far as many of the expositors say, it was really the dungeon that they put him. In the dungeon. And But there's something happening in verse 4. So it says, delivering him to four squads of soldiers. A squad had four soldiers. So there were 16 soldiers to guard Peter. Okay, They would just rotate him, you know, six hours shifts. And to guard him and intending after the Passover to bring him out before the people kill him after the Passover so there wouldn't be an uprising. So Peter was kept in prison but B-U-T when you see a word like that it changes everything because God is in control and what does Romans 8.28 say? All things. How many things? All things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose right? Anybody here called according to his purpose? I hope we all are, right? Called according to his purpose. And so, <clears throat> but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church of God. But prayer was being made fervently by the church of God. You know, I don't know what you guys do from 5 to 6 on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, after church on Saturday nights. But, you know, you have the opportunity to pray. You know, choose one of those days. Choose 15 minutes of the one hour. You know, I, I always remember Reverend Willis back at North Park Days. He was a prayer warrior, little guy, four foot two or something, skinny, but he loved to pray. He was a man of prayer. He would pray four hours a day on his knees for all the different prayer requests. And uh, he was such a powerful man of God. And, uh, you know, his whole life was about prayer. And he died when he was like 98 years old or something. And it was a big uh, void that was left in the church because he was such a great prayer warrior. You know, but God tells us some things. He tells us in Proverbs 15, 29, it says that God promises to hear with a mind to act on the prayers of those who are righteous. He has a mind to act on the prayers of those that are righteous. That's an interesting verse, isn't it? James 5, 16 says the effective prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman can accomplish what? much can accomplish much 
the prayers of godly people. You know, I think as people across America are praying that we're going to see just a movement of God and a movement of his word, you know, in the next month or so. You know, the prayers of the godly people have the power to accomplish much. Turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. In verse 12, it says, he's quoting the Old Testament. He's quoting Psalms 34 here. Peter is, who was about, it was in prison, about to be headed. And it says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, For the eyes of the Lord are where? Upon the righteous. And he, his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is what? Against those who do evil. Those that are doing evil, they're not going to get away with anything. I mean, they're going to face the judgment of God. If they don't do it here on this earth, they're going to face it in heaven. You know, when they're judged for their actions. And uh, there's going to be a terrible outcry as they're judged and sent to hell. You know, those that are saying that abortion is all right, those that are saying it's all right to kill another person, those that are saying, you know, you lie still, you just go right down the line. They're going to be cast into hell forever and ever. They're not getting away with it. You know, so this is a great verse that Peter is quoting here from the book of Psalms. We say this verse a lot. It's on your outline, Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for... I think we white out. You get white out and you white out a verse. I think a lot of people white out this verse. Be anxious for nothing. That means small things or big things. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Pray about everything. Little things, big things. Don't be anxious. Don't be, you know, so uptight about all these things that are going on. Let your requests be made known to God. And then just don't say, okay, God, I let you, my re request be made known to you. And then you just gobble them up and take them with you again. All those things that you've been praying about. God can do a far better job than we can. Go back to Acts chapter 12, verse 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but what were the people doing? Praying for him. Prayer was made for him being made fervently by the church of God. Fervent prayer. Remember, going back, the, the, the effective prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much, or a righteous woman. Fervent prayer, not giving up. Fervent prayer, passionate prayer. You know, I, I mean, that's what God says they were doing. And then in, what happened as a response in verse 6, and on that very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, what was Peter doing? Was he all anxious and uptight and upset and angry and bitter? He was sleeping. He was, he was getting a good night's sleep. He was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chains and the guards in front of the door. They were watching over the prison. You know, here's Peter in prison and the church at that time was fervently praying for him. And then we're going to see in Acts chapter 12, verses 6 to 11, God, here's the record of God answering their prayer. Does God, do you really believe that God can answer prayers? Yes. Now there's some qualifications for that that we'll take a look at in a minute here. But Peter is going to be miraculously rescued. And I believe that God does answer the requests of his followers. And, you know, years later, Peter was crucified upside down. And it says that he would glorify Jesus. 
And so back to that verse in, in Acts 8, it says, All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And sometimes the answer is no. <clears throat> sometimes the answer is wait. It's not time yet. Sometimes the answer is yes. Now here's some great verses for all of us. Turn to James chapter 4, verse 3. And this isn't the James that was just killed. There's two James mentioned as apostles. But James chapter 4. Here's a great theology lesson for all of us. That's why you always compare Scripture with Scripture. James chapter 4, verse 3. Well, verse 2 says, You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. Do we see that going on in the United States or across the world? And then it says, And you are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and you quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. And you ask and do not receive because you ask with what? The wrong motives. Underline that in your Bibles. Are we asking with the right motives? What was the wrong motive? So that you could spend it on your pleasures. Interesting, isn't that? They were asking with the wrong motives. You know, pray and you let God decide what is best for you. Maybe God says, hey, someone's praying about not having any money, not having any food. Well, maybe he's God saying you need to work and save money to buy what you need. That could be, right? People don't look at it that way. No, we'll just go and go to the government and they'll take care of it. Maybe God will use a secondary agency like another brother or sister maybe that God's provided to meet those needs. The question is, what does God want? What is his will? What will he be glorified through? Those are all good questions to ask. You know, when James says in chapter 4, verse 2, you lust and do not have, so you commit murder or you just steal it. You know, my sister in L.A., she doesn't live in a great part of L.A., and she called up today and she said that her car had been stolen from out in front of her house. Well, it was a 2020 Kia or something, and this is the second time within a year. And right down the street, there's an encampment that the city won't do anything about. And they come up and down the street and, you know, take things and break in and do all kinds of things. You have because, you know, you, you don't, maybe it, God says, hey, neither let him eat if he doesn't work. You know, so maybe God's trying to teach them something through all this. But you have not because you ask not. He says, keep praying. Don't stop praying. You have a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter. You have, you know, prodigal cousin and aunt, neighbors, people that you work with that are not Christians, are really mean, they're really wicked, they're vicious. Pray for them and keep praying for them. Don't stop. Be fervent, like the early church was for Peter, be fervent in your prayers. And uh, pray. In Philippians, he says, pray without ceasing, constantly. When can you pray? 24 hours. Any 24 hours during the day. And does it matter if I'm in the car? Well, keep your eyes open, but you can pray. You know, does it matter if I'm somewhere else? You know, do I? I mean, God says it's not the body position, whether you're standing up and praising the Lord or sitting down and praising the Lord or on your knees praising the Lord. Keep praising the Lord. Keep worshiping him. Keep being obedient to him. Amen? Follow me, Jesus says. Follow me. And so here's Peter sleeping. The church is praying. He's bound in chains. The prison doors are locked and bolted. Did God forget about him? No, God didn't forget about him. Does God for, does he forget about me? Some people say, oh, I, I, 
I'm nothing. You know, does God forget about me? No, God doesn't forget about you either. He said to his disciples, follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. Be obedient. Now here's a great verse. Turn to Psalms 34, verse 7. Back in the book of Psalms. And if you don't have a Bible, feel free to take one of the ones from the back and devour it, study it, get into the Word. It's better than any news, you know, any TV program that's out there. There's some wicked ones that are coming. Psalms 34, I sought the Lord, verse 4 says, and he did what? He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And then it says in verse 7, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And he does what? And he rescues them. Isn't that a great verse? The angel of the Lord encamps around us. And he says he rescues us. Now turn to the book of uh, 2 Kings. Back in the Old Testament, 2 Kings. <clears throat> chapter 6. You know, it says, um, do not neglect to show hospitality, compassion, mercy, grace to people. Because... You never know when you're entertaining an angel unaware. You never know. You know, anybody that's sitting next to you right now could be an angel. Look at them closely. They maybe they're not. But <laughs> or when someone comes through the door, you never know, man, if that's an angel. So we treat them with the grace of Jesus Christ as he has blessed us and used us by his grace. And so in 2 Kings chapter 6, here's a good illustration of this. And you can read the whole context here, but verse 15. Well, they, verse 14 says, He sent, the enemy sent horses and chariots and a great armor there, and they came by night and they surrounded the city. So the enemy, you know, brought all their physical forces, and they were going to kill probably Elisha. And so it says in verse 15, now when the attendant of the man of God, of Elisha's attendant, had risen early and gone out, behold, an army was out there with horses and chariots, and they were circling the city. You know, and, and the, the attendant's thinking, oh my goodness. You know, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble, man. We can't come against this army. And his servant said to him, My master, my master, what shall we do? You know, frustrated in the flesh like we get so many times. What shall we do? And Elisha answered and said, Do not fear. Those who are with us are more than those who are with him. And the servant's looking around, and he goes, well, wait a minute. There's Bill and Jessica, and there's Scott, and there's Paul Chris, and there's Luther, and, you know, Buster here. I count six or seven, and there's probably 50, 60,000 of these enemies coming against us. What are we going to do? And it says, Elisha prayed. There we go. The church was praying. Elisha was praying a man of faith, and he said, O oh Lord, I pray, open his eyes. Open the servant's eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw. And what did he see? Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. All around there was heavenly angels and surrounding him and protecting him. You know, I know I've used up a lot of angels in my life. You know, you ever think you might have used up a few angels that God sent angels? What are angels? 
ministering servants. Yep, ministering servants sent to the saints, the Old Testament saints. And so they were there. They were encamping around those who fear him and rescue him. You know, Psalms 34, 7. And so what does God do? He sends an angel back in Acts chapter 12. Go back to Acts chapter 12. Remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood, Ephesians says, but against principalities and powers of the heavenly forces and wickedness. There, there's a battle taking place of, of wickedness. You know, God sends his army, and they're a lot more powerful than the army of Satan. And so in Acts chapter 12, God's going to send an angel. We don't know who this is. Maybe it's Michael, very powerful angel of God. You know, maybe it's the angel Gabriel. We don't know. But go back to Acts chapter 12. And so, <clears throat> behold, Peter sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, guards in front of the door. And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared, and a light sh shined in the cell. You know, kind of similar to what was going on to the angels that were sent to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. And it says, and he struck Peter's side, and he roused him, said, Get up quickly! And his chains fell off of his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird yourself, put on your sandals. And he did so. It's good to be obedient to the angel of the Lord. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and do what? Follow me. Follow me. Wrap your cloak around me, around you and follow me. And it says, and he went out and continued to follow. He was being obedient. He did not even know that what was being done by the angel was real. He couldn't even, you know, I mean, you ever wake up from a deep sleep and you, and you, you know, you go, whoa, I, am I really here? You know, I always check out to see, make sure Stephanie's there because you know, I know she's great, so. And she follows God, so if she's gone, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so is this dream too good to be true? Is it really real? You know, and he went out and he continued to follow, and he did not know what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. And when they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened for them by itself. You ever been to a gated community and all of a sudden you drive through and the gate kind of opens up? You go, whoa, that was great. How did that happen? And the gate just opens up. And it says, <coughs> it opened up by itself and they went out and went along one street and immediately, at that point in time, the angel departed from him. And when Peter came to himself, he said, now, when he had his coffee, right? <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> then it says, now I know for sure that the Lord has sent forth his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that miraculous thing that took place there, that miracle from God. And I think if we were really conscious of things, we would see that God is doing miracles all the time in our lives. Miracles. You know, I mean, just by the fact that we're here tonight, that's a miracle. You know, the, the grace and the mercy that God gives to each and every one of us all the time. And so, in verse 12, it says, And when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark. And remember we talked about Mark when he, they, Paul and them had arguments over Mark and whether to take him along or not. And this is the same Mark here. 
where many were gathered together. And what were they doing? Praying. Praying. So he went to his friend's house here, and the church was gathered together. In their fervent prayer, they were praying for Peter. And the next part of the story is just like crazy. It says in verse 13, And when he knocked at the door of the gate, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she's heard Peter's voice many times, because of her joy, she forgot to open up the gate. And she ran. She was so excited, she ran in and announced to all the people that were gathered at the prayer meeting, fervently praying for Peter, announced, hey, Peter is standing in front of the gate. He's right there. He's here. The guy we've been praying for fervently, passionately. And they said to her, you are out of your mind. I love it. You're out of your mind. You know, you're losing it. You know, we'll, we'll talk next week. Very important study about faith. Walking in faith. They said, you're out of your mind. And then it goes on and it says, but she kept insisting that it was so. You ever been around somebody that, you know, you, 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 know, you ask them, pray about something, and, you know, you think they forgot about it. And then they, they, every time they see you, they ask about how's that prayer going and, you know, that we prayed about with you. Are you doing Okay. Have you seen any answers to prayer yet? And they keep our insisting, you know, praying passionately for whatever that prayer request was. And, and so she's going, wait a minute. Hey, guys, he's outside the door. He's, he's right here. And they kept saying, it's just an angel. It's just an angel. And, uh, you know, part of the Jewish theology was that you know, every person had a, an angel that looks like you. You know, and so they, it's just his angel. It's not really Peter. You know, it, it was kind of, you know how the disciples sometimes, Jesus said to them that you have a lack of faith. You have small faith. And so here they've been praying so passionately, and all of a sudden Peter's there, and they go, come on. Can't be. God doesn't you know, work that fast or do miracles. Yeah, he does. In Acts chapter 12, verse 16, Peter continued knocking. Let me in! And then it says, and when they had, ha had opened the doors, they saw him and they were amazed. God does answer prayer. If God be for us, who can be against us? Herod wanted to take him that very night and have the same thing happen to him that happened to James. Here's God's miraculously rescue doing a miracle in Peter's life. And you can put your name there. God wants to do a miracle in Buster's life. Things that he's been praying for. Things that are going on in his life. He wants to do a miracle. You know, and God is working behind the scenes. We have hope. We're not to be pitied. We have hope today. Keep that hope. Don't lose that hope. Things don't look good in the United States, but we still have hope because we know someone that's greater and, and someone that's in charge, right? So even though we don't see it, we have hope. And God has sent his ministering servants many times and spiritually. And, and, you know, we may never know it, but God says, <clears throat> I've sent the Holy Spirit to give you power, to give you might, to give you a, sane mo a sound mind. Is there anything impossible for God? With men... It might be impossible, it says. But with God, all things are possible. So never give up. Keep praying.
passionately, fervently. Keep seeking Jesus. Our lives are in his hands. And I, I just thank Jesus for rescuing so many people that have come through our church in the last 41 years, doing miracles in their lives. And uh, here's one. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 28. Here's the verse I was looking for earlier. Matthew 10, verse 28. <clears throat> and do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. Hell, the final place of punishment. And then he tells us, are not two sparrows sold for a cent, just a cent? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. The very hairs of our heads are numbered. And then he goes on and he says, <clears throat> Here it is, verse 32, or uh, verse 31. Therefore, do not fear. So many people have fear of everything today. You are worth more. Your value is more than those sparrows. And God says, not one of them fall ground apart from your father. If those sparrows are important to God, think how your importance to God is. And then he says in verse 32, Everyone, therefore, who confesses me before men, I will confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. You know, there's a, there's a time where the love of many grows cold. You know, we've talked a lot about that. And God says, man, don't be afraid to stand up for Jesus. Don't be afraid. You know, don't be afraid to speak the truth. You do it in love, but speak the truth. And, uh, you know, all of us have that ability to be ambassadors, to preach the word, to as we said earlier, to be as witnesses, to be lights in this wicked and perverse generation in which we live. You know, all of us have that ability. And don't forget, pray always. Be anxious, worried for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And not according to our own selfish motives, but according to his desires, his will. Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you for every person that you brought here in this rainy night, Lord, that got out of their houses. Maybe some of them got wet walking here. Lord, they're afraid to use their cars because people don't know how to drive in wet rain. But they made it here, God. And they, they made it here, and you have a reason why you brought them here. Maybe to encourage us, maybe to strengthen our faith, maybe to be convicted of sin, to have you reign in our hearts, not the things of this world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. But that we would put you first, Lord. God, even as they were taking communion together, it says in the book of 1 Corinthians, many were taking communion unworthily. They were still throwing their sins at you in your face. Just like Ananias and Sapphira when they came before the apostles and they said, oh yeah, we've done what we said we were going to do. And it says they lied to the Holy Spirit and that very night they were struck dead. 
I mean, there should be an awesome fear of you. An awesome respect of who you are. You're our creator. You're our Lord. And so, Lord, before we go out of this room, if there's anyone watching online, anybody here today, that needs to repent of some sins in their lives, maybe that they only know about, maybe other people know about them, but they need to ask your forgiveness. They need to ask for healing. You are faithful, and you will forgive. You will blot those things out. You will remember them no more as far as the east is from the west. Lord, as we're gathered here, may we not just not play religion or come to a building. Lord, we are the church. We are the body of Christ, men and women. The church is not about a building. It's about you and our relationship with you, Lord. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and righteous to forgive us cleanse us maybe we need a healing in our lives from some things of our past some sins that we've been involved in now's the time to get rid of those things to confess them to be cleansed to be made whole so if God's speaking to us tonight about something in our lives that we need to ask your forgiveness for right now just raise your hand Lord, you see those hands and you know what's going on in their lives. Anybody else that should be raising their hand and isn't tonight? Several more. We pray for a healing. We pray for a miracle. Acts 12, we pray for a miracle. That you would start moving miraculously in our body, Lord. Setting the captives free. Break in the chains of bondage that Peter was under. You broke the chains. So spiritually that you would break the chains and open the prison doors. So many similarities to what you say for us spiritually. Open the prison doors. Set the captives free. Right now all the people watching online, all the people that are here, all the people that will be watching online. Lord, give our lives to you. Take up our crosses daily, it says, and follow you. Every day, follow you. And be men and women of fervent prayer. Fervent prayer. Bold prayer. And have faith. Have faith like a grain of mustard seed. Have faith. We want victory in our lives. We want victory in this church. Move mightily, God, for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand. <clears throat> remember, uh, for some of you that came in late, remember the men's conference next saturday remember women's bible study on thursday going through chronicles wednesday night matthew tuesday night and uh pray man we got a big election coming up if god tarries that long a big election so look at these things that were passed out and and uh let god speak to your heart you know I love that verse that says that God knows us even in the womb. He places his calling upon us. And uh, he knit us in the, the mother's womb. And I, I look at my daughter, Dana. <clears throat> Less than a month, she's going to have a new baby. And she is ready. You know? Man, she, she is ready. She goes, Lord, tonight would be great. You know, but God also says that as just like a woman in labor giving birth, you know, so it will be. 
when the Son of Man comes back again and increasing in intensity the things around us. Are we ready? Are we ready? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest, Rest for your soul. Let's sing our closing song. <clears throat> my eyes are dry. My faith is old. My heart is hard. My prayers are cold. But I know how to be alive to you and dead to me but what can be done for an old heart like mine soften it up with the oil and wine the oil is you your spirit of love, please wash me anew in the wine of your blood. My eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, my prayers are cold, but I know how I are to be alive to you and dead to me. But what can be done with a whole heart like mine? Oh, soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you, your spirit of love. Please wash me anew in the wine of your blood. But what can be done for an old heart like mine? Please soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you, your spirit of love. Please wash me anew in the wine of Hey, uh, don't forget Friday night, God is not dead. Yeah. Part two. It's a great movie. Starts at 6.30. Friday night at the movies, baby. All right. God bless you. There's plenty of food. Uh, help yourselves. And uh, let's see God do some miracles in our lives this week. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what I want from, from Him. <laughs> faithfulness. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Give it to me, Lord. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Take my heart. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind and transform it. Righteousness, righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. Take my heart. So take my heart and form it. Transform it, take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord, to yours, to yours, oh Lord, take my heart 
transform it. Take my will, conform it to your, to your, oh Lord. To your, to your, oh your. Boy, come over here and sing. God bless everybody. Godspeed. Right on, brother.